Hey guys, in today's video, we're gonna be talking about prepping for crane day. We got all our walls stood up and we're ready to fly trusses. Now we gotta scatter these around the house so that things go really smooth on that day. On this house, we're gonna be setting all the trusses with a telehandler, but it's a very similar process and we'll share the differences if you're using a crane versus setting them yourself. Okay, so when I'm leading a house and we're getting ready to set trusses, I'm actually thinking about setting trusses way before we get the trusses on site. In this scenario, we haven't even built the garage yet, just in case we need to get the telehandler boom over some of these walls. Sometimes we'll build a part of the house and put the roof on just so that we can reach it before we stand the walls next to it. So this, this is something you're thinking about the entire project to get ready to be able to set all the trusses with whatever machine you're using. For setting trusses, it's all about strategy. So we're gonna hop on the 3D viewer here and just get an overview, bird's eye view of the house. Okay, so here we are. We're looking at our house here. And this porch on the back isn't poured yet. We don't have concrete. So that's gonna allow us to drive in closer. Now I've already kind of strategized this one, but looking around, we got a big roof here. And on this back side, closest to the bottom of the screen, we don't have any room to drive the telehandler. So we can't set them from this side of the house. So we're gonna come off from the back and we're gonna come off from the front here to set these trusses. Now, normally we start on a gable end. We'll set the gable, whether it's built or not, and then we'll work off of it. As soon as we get a few trusses out there, we're gonna brace it down so that we have a solid triangle to set the rest of the roof off of. But in this scenario, since the reach is so long, we're actually gonna start in the middle here. We're gonna start right on this wall where this truss sits on this edge here. You can see it's flush. And we're gonna set that truss first and then brace it and work off of it out towards the back of the house here. So here we are in the back of the house and you can see that wall all the way through the building. That's the wall that we're gonna start setting trusses on and work back this way. I already drove the telehandler in here between these two footings just to see that we could reach that truss to get it set. So the way I'm strategizing is I wanna be able to back out, grab a truss and come back in quickly. So I wanna stack my pile right over here. So that way I can drive in, hook up to a truss, back up, and go right into place. And then we'll just work our way out towards the gable. Now every house is different, so it really takes a lot of strategy and just getting used to it. But you gotta be thinking about it the whole project, how you're gonna be setting trusses. Another thing I forgot to mention is that I wanna set this side of the roof first because on the heels of these trusses where they break in the middle of the house, we have a ledger board, an LVL, that's gonna screw to the trusses and that's what we're gonna set all of the other trusses off of. So we wanna set this first so we can get that LVL up and then set those trusses. So now that we kinda of have a plan of how we wanna fly these trusses, we're gonna go dig through the pile, find the ones we need for this section and lay them in the order that we will grab them over here. We don't wanna to have to be digging through the piles and the truss manufacturer doesn't always stack them the right way. So you may have to restack them to make sure it goes very efficient. If you're using a crane to set your trusses, this gets even more important. You wanna be able to park the crane in at as few spots as possible and have the trusses stacked in the order that you're gonna pull them. So you can just grab it, fly it, grab it, fly it, get it done really quickly because a crane is worth six guys an hour. So we're over here by the tags on the heels of our trusses and we're gonna hop on the truss layout so we can see what truss we're looking for. So over here, we wanna start on this wall right here. BO5 is sitting flush on the edge of this wall. Then next after that, we're setting towards the back of the house here. So next we have two BO6s, a BO7, two BO8s, nine BO9s, and a B10 for the gable. So right here, you can see they actually put them in order, the right order for us. We have BO4, two BO4s on the bottom, BO5, and then we're all in order to our gable. 
Now, we have to get a bunk off the top here, but this bunk in this order is exactly what we need and what we're gonna pull from to fly it with. So we're gonna bring these bunks over and we're gonna lay the last truss down so we get to it last. And then we'll just pull these two BO4s off the top and bring them back over here because we're gonna be setting them from this side, the front of the house. Okay, so to get down here, we're gonna move this bunk first. And all these trusses are going on the front of the garage. So we're gonna set them right beside the garage here, right beside our tool trailer, so that we can grab a truss, back up, and put them in. And just do that over and over to fill up the garage. Now, this truss is gonna be one of the first ones we're setting and then it will work up from the bottom here. So we're gonna pull the top two off so that we can just set these down. Uh, this one goes in first and then the one underneath it is a gable. So we wanna pull that out. We don't want it underneath because we sheet those on the ground. It saves a lot of time. Now when you're lifting trusses with a telehandler, you wanna make sure and check the weight on the tags. You never wanna max out your weight on your tele. It's tips it forward, it's a bad deal. So. It's pretty easy to do that. They put the weight right on the tags, and then you just look at the book and the telly to see how far you can boom out with that much weight. So for moving bunks of trusses around, we use a steel cable because uh, these plates tear up our straps so bad. It's not recommended to pick it up, trusses up with one pick point. You're supposed to use a spreader bar, but that's what we do most of the time. So we'll see how it works. So another thing I'm thinking about when I'm setting trusses around the house is these truss locks, which we use these for setting all of our trusses. Uh, it saves going up there during, while you're flying things and nailing in blocks. So when we put these on, we want them to aim up. That way, if we're really rolling, we can stagger these trusses and have all of the greenies on ready to go. So then we can pick this truss up and fly it up there. We'll have a rope on the other side and it will just spin around right into place. So that's why I laid it down this way, so that the greenies go up. So when you're grabbing your bunks of trusses, you may have to put your fork in here to spread them apart so they can get your strap through. Uh, doesn't hurt the trusses if you do it right. So we got all our trusses scattered around the house. They're layered in order to grab them so that as we grab them, we just keep pulling them off the top of the stack. Now, we're, we're setting this house with a telehandler so it's a little bit different than if we were preparing for a crane. If we were preparing for a crane, we would actually plan it all based off this corner because the, the house makes an L. It goes this way and then the garage comes out. So we would wanna back the crane up here and we could probably do this whole thing without moving the crane mid set. So we would start in the back on that far side over there and set trusses towards the front, pulling them with the crane. And then we'd say, same on this run right here, we'd start in the back and pull them off and set them towards the crane. Now, if we were doing that, we would stack all these trusses in order that we grab them right there so that the crane can just drag and drop over and over. We'd do the order a little bit differently because we'd be setting the trusses differently. So we are, we're always thinking ahead of how we're setting trusses in order to stack them properly. Same thing with the greenies is we want it so that the greenies or the truss locks go up so they're easy to put on and take them off and fly them. Now before you prep for your crane coming you need to know how far your crane can reach. So the crane we use is about a 60 foot reach off the back of the truck. So we would actually say that okay the truck's gonna park right here so we would pull a tape measure from here straight across to the back of that house to the far gable. Remember, we're hooking in the center of the truss, so that's where the crane hook needs to be able to reach, is center of the truss on that back wall. So we pull a tape to make sure we don't have to move the crane around. So we went ahead and set all of our gables aside. Now, we have a gable here and two gables in this stack. And then we have the second truss inset here. So we're gonna take these off and we're gonna sheet this and we're gonna put all the outlookers on and the subfascia on on the ground. So if you wanna see how to do that, click here to watch building gables on ground. 
And if you guys got any value out of this video, please subscribe.